So we have our contact poses. Now what we need to start adding are these other poses that show the physics involved in a walk cycle. So we have our contact pose, but we don't have our down pose where the character absorbs that weight, or the passing pose where the characters pushed themselves forward, or the up pose where the character is starting to fall forward again into the next contact pose. But again, the question is, which pose should I do next? Should I just work forward from contact to contact? Or should I cut it in half and maybe do the passing pose? There isn't a singular answer, but my personal preference and most animators I know, their personal preference is to start with the or to do the passing pose next. The reason for that is because Maya is going to give you some of this information for free. It's a little faster to do this one next. And if you're working from sort of landmark to landmark or, or, or major change to major change, then um, you are able to guide that better if you, if you work on those major change poses and then just fill in the differences in between. So I'm just going to go to the passing pose next. And to do that, just like we did with our contacts earlier, I'm going to make that pose about halfway between my two contacts. So again, I'll need two passing poses, one in between this contact and this contact, and one in between this contact and this contact. So it's our legs passing on those. So I'll go about halfway. I'll go to about frame 22. Select all of this and hit S. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my foot is cleanly on the ground, right? And so we're seeing we're kind of floating there a little bit. That's my translate Y. So if I hit zero, that'll put it on the ground. And I can zero out that rotation forward and back, which is the X, right? Um, I can also probably take away all of that ball and toe rotation. So now my foot is pretty neatly on the ground. And if I scrub forward, this is a big deal. How that care or how that foot goes flat is pretty important, right? And so if you notice now when it goes flat, if I use my greater than less than keys, it feels like the heel kind of slides back a little bit. And then when we go up onto that foot in the next pose, it feels like the foot slides forward again. So that means that the foot isn't in the exact right spot. And so I can sort of nudge that forward just a little bit and hopefully make that feel a little bit more like it's clapping down. So, yeah, there we go. So that's feeling a little bit less like it's sliding. So we get that, and that means that foot is in the right spot. Now, as we mentioned in our passing pose, our character has to be over the leg that is supporting them. So I'm going to shift my character's weight over. I'm gonna rotate him just a little bit here to make this a little bit more of a dynamic pose and push them up a little bit into this. Um, I'll also do a little bit of work to aim that knee a little bit better. So maybe something like that. And then the other leg, you'll see in the passing pose, is sort of dragging along behind. So I will rotate this and that is one of the things I kind of disagree with on this illustration. Your foot usually doesn't come up quite that far. We are usually trying to conserve our energy as humans. And, uh, and so that means that raising your foot that high burns extra calories. So um, I'll, I'm not going to pull mine up quite so high. Um, I'll just raise it up enough for my toe to, to clear the ground. Um, so let's sort of rotate this around a little bit um, maybe something like that and then I can get rid of that ball toe rotation and get a little bit more regular rotation like this um, yeah so that's the he has pretty big feet so I'm gonna have to pick him up quite a bit All right, so maybe something like that um, and I'm gonna push my character forward just a little bit to be over that weight again we're just trying to make sure this feels believable and I'll aim my knee out just a little bit as well All right, so I'm getting a, a little bit more of a dynamic pose there on my passing pose now again got to remember to select this and hit S to nail everything down so now we get passing and then I can do this next passing 
right here. And so it'll go a little, I'll go a little faster on it so as uh, not to bore you here. Okay, so the last thing, set keyframes on everything. So now we have our idle pose or our neutral pose, and then our, let's turn it here where we can see it, neutral to our contact, passing, contact, passing, contact. And if we watch this, it's going to start looking much more like a walk. Right. But again, we're not done, and I know that this is a lot of work, but trust me that these next poses are, are still very important. So I'm going to go ahead and make my down pose next. My down pose is between my contact and my passing pose. So if I select all of this, we have contact and passing. Our down pose is where our character absorbs the weight onto that foot. So I can go about halfway in between, and I'll go ahead and grab that foot. And really what I want is I want this pose on this foot to be exactly the same as this pose on my passing. So I can copy that key. I can either middle click and drag and hit S, or I can right click and say copy, and then go here and right click and say paste. Now with the down pose, you'll see that the character sinks in to that step. And so just letting the hips be is not the right option. We have to push down into that as if that front leg is absorbing that weight. Um, we may even want to sort of drag along or, or like, you know, sort of sink into it like this. Um, we can kind of test this a little bit as we go. And the last thing on the down pose is this back foot is sort of pushing off. And so I will zero out my um, toes and knee stuff here. Right? And I'll make that back foot seem to be kicking off behind us. That may be a little too aggressive. Let's do maybe something like this. And then flip that toe out just a little bit. Right? Now, again, where the character is absorbing the weight on this foot, I probably want to shift it over that foot maybe do a little something like that and I can kind of step back and forth to see what's going to work well um, let's see how that foot kickoff feels yeah let's try that um, I want to aim that knee out just a little bit So know all these little bitty changes I'm making seem very small, but they're going to add up to something that's much more significant. So again, select the entire character, hit S. I'm going to go out here and do my other down pose, and I'll go quickly through it again. Okay, so last little thing I'll see is that I don't have an up pose. And if I hit play right now, a lot of people will feel like I've messed it up, right? So you have to kind of trust this process, right? From the contact to the down, the passing, and now we're missing our up. And so what we're gonna feel is like it's got a little hitch in every step. Feel a little hitch. And that's because there's no um, there's no reaction or uh, reciprocal to our down. There's no up. Right? Our character never goes up high for the up pose. And remember, the up pose is where our character pushes ourself up or pushes himself up and starts to fall forward into the next contact pose. So usually we get pretty close, but this is just a small change we need to make. Um, I want my character's hips to be pretty high. Push them up pretty high here. Um, I sometimes we'll roll up on the um, the toe just a little bit more. Right. 
And then I usually like to make it look like the character's sort of dragging the toe along behind just a little bit on this pose. Um, you may not want to keep the knee bent too much on this first leg, so maybe something like this. Right? Sort of dragging along behind. They've had to pull their feet up just a little higher to flip through, maybe add some toe drag. Right? Select all that and hit S. Now, a lot of times I'll, I'll not remember if I set a keyframe on everything, so just to make sure, I'll hit S and then the greater than key and S and just do that over and over again to make sure I'm getting keys on everything. And finally, I'll set my last up pose here. Okay set a keyframe on everything. Now the last thing I want to do is I, I just kind of eyeballed these numbers and this doesn't seem evenly spaced. You'll see that from 15 to 18 feels a little faster than 30 to 34 does. So I'm going to space these out just a little bit, select everything, and then I can shift these poses just by you know highlighting this and sliding it. And so I think my animation really probably needed to be through 48. So 15 through 48, that looks a little bit more even. And if we hit play now, we get that. Now, it's not bad. Um, there's a couple of little hitches in it, but we'll worry about those on the next um, few videos. Let's watch it a few more times. The last pose I think I need is I need some sort of pose for right here, this transition. This doesn't look very good to me. Um, and so I will sort of create an extra step pose, right? Just a little bit of a push off here in a step. Um, and so it doesn't have to be anything major, maybe on frame six. I'll go ahead and have the foot still in the same location as frame one. So it feels like the character pushes himself forward, maybe rolls up on the ball here. Um, and then not having so much of that here. Right? the character kind of pushes himself forward and then we need a little bit of an up pose right through here on everything so let me make sure I get a key on both of those this is sort of leading into our contact pose right um, and so sort of another variation of an up pose um, something kind of more like this Maybe drag that toe a little bit behind. Right. And so now we get this like steps into the contact pose. Now it's important to remember that our actual walk cycle though is just this section. And that's what we're going to be working with next. This just leads us in to the walk. Right. All right, we'll pick this up in the next video.